Hi everyone. Let's take a look at number seven on page 348. Vector x and vector y are vectors of magnitude one and two, respectively, with an angle of 120 degrees between them. Determine the magnitude of three times vector x plus two times vector y and the direction of three times vector x plus two times vector y. Step one, draw a diagram. The fact that the angle between these two vectors is 120 degrees implies the following. So again, you go back and you start with the first vector, which I'm going to name vector x, which looks roughly speaking something like that. There's a second vector, of course, that's going to be y, which looks roughly speaking something like that. And again, notice the magnitude of vector x is going to be 1. And the magnitude of vector y is going to be 2. And the angle between them is going to be 120 degrees. The key here, and this is a common mistake by a lot of students sometimes, is you have to remember this angle only makes sense when you connect the vectors tail to tail. So if you're not connecting it tail to tail, then this angle is not going to be 120 degrees necessarily. So that is the first step. And the second step is you're looking for 3x plus 2y in terms of magnitude and in terms of direction. So here's a second diagram. Let's go back. Let's use the same color. So in this case, I'm thinking 3 times x would look, roughly speaking, something like this. Let's see if I can draw it. Something like that. And the second vector is going to be 2 times y. So it's going to look, again, roughly speaking, oops, let's try again. Roughly speaking, something like that. Now, again, it's not drawn to scale but this will give you a good approximation. So this is going to be the magnitude of 2y, which basically is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And again, we know that because the magnitude is 2. 2 times 2, that's going to be 4. And if you look at the bottom vector, that's going to be 3 times x. And of course, 3 times x, in terms of magnitude, the answer is going to be 3. Again, the magnitude is 1, 3 times 1, 3. Now, the angle between them, is going to be 60 degrees. Now, how do we know that? Again, if you think about this, this line that I'm drawing right here in blue and this line in blue, they are parallel lines. So this angle is going to be 120. This must be 180 minus 120, which would be 60 degrees. So again, that's how you can figure that out. Your goal is to find the resultant vector. So you're looking for the vector starting from here all the way to there approximately. Now there are two things you're looking for. 3x plus 2y in terms of magnitude and direction which means angle theta. So again what are we looking for? Magnitude and the direction means it's angle theta and of course be mindful when we talk about the angle at the end you gotta just you gotta state that this angle is relative to vector 3x. And we'll do that. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, if I start with the magnitude, you're thinking about the cosine law. Don't forget the cosine law. C squared equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B cosine C. So in this problem, it's going to be the magnitude of 3x plus 2y. And of course, the opposite of squaring something is to find the square root. And it's going to be the square root of 3 square plus 4 square minus 2 times 3 times 4 cosine 60 degrees. Now, if you think about this, you could technically do this without a calculator, but I'm still going to pick up my calculator and do this with you here and now. So I'm going to leave it in both exact form, and I'm also going to round this to one decimal place. So take your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, turn it on, press clear. Here we go. 3 square plus 4 square minus 2 times 3 times 4 times cosine of 60 degrees. That's going to be exactly the square root of 13 units. Or 
if you round this to one decimal place, it's approximately 3.6 units. So again, that is the answer for the first part. To find the second part, again, you can apply something you did back in grade 10 math, also known as the sine law. So to find this angle, angle theta, we could write sine theta divided by four equals to sine of 60 divided by, now to maximize the accuracy, I'm gonna use exactly square root of 13. And again, I'm just gonna update the diagram. This is gonna be the square root of 13. So now to find angle theta, first, the opposite of dividing by four is to multiply by four. And in one step, here's what happens, right? You take your calculator, you press four times sine of 60, divide that by the square root of 13, take the inverse sine of that, and if you round your final answer to the nearest degree, we're looking at approximately 74 degrees. Now the problem is you cannot say 74 degrees because that's not good enough to describe the direction. So what you're really doing is you go back and you kind of say, well, the direction, and I'm looking at this piece right here, it's gonna be therefore 74 degrees with respect to vector x or three times vector x. So again, this angle, 74 degrees, let me highlight this for you, it's relative to this vector 3x, just like that. I hope this makes sense.